Hello everybody, it is Purple Nova and welcome back to Satisfactory. This is episode 84 on the series and in today's episode we are going to finally be unlocking the last uh, hub upgrade that we can do. We're, we've got all the resources for it. It took us a couple hours in all honesty to get everything from last episode to this episode. But we got it all. We got all the turbo motors, we got all the fused modular frames, the cooling systems, the control rods. We have all of it and we are going to use it to unlock our final hub upgrade which is really exciting so with that being said let's jump into it all right so we are here at our hub on another sunrise uh in satisfactory had to happen quite a bit where we start episodes on sunrises at least recently it feels like uh but here we have all of our electromagnetic control rods we need 400 of those we need 400 cooling systems we need 200 fused modular frames and in my inventory we already have the uh Turbo motors. Yeah, see, there's 50 and there's 50. So heck yeah, that should be everything. This is a very expensive upgrade. Um, rightfully so, as it being the last hub upgrade that we will do. Which is kind of sad, in all honesty. I mean, we've we've sent this ship off who knows how many times. Um, this is the last one of this playthrough that we'll actually be sending it off, which is crazy to think about. I mean, 84 episodes in and here we are ready to send off our final hub upgrade yeah we everything else is unlocked so what do we get in this upgrade well we get nitric acid produced by reaction of nitrogen gas with water its high corrosiveness and oxidizing properties make it an excellent choice for refinement and fuel production processes then package nitric acid we also get non-fissile uranium fizzle fizzle oh, whatever the fuck the isotope uranium 238 is non-fizzle Faisal? Fizzle? I don't know. Mean cannot be used for nuclear fusion. Fission. Sorry. It can, however, be converted into fizzle. <laughs> I think it's fizzle. I don't know. I'm just really saying yes to myself. Plutonium and a particle accelerator. A what? Okay. A plutonium pellet. Produced in the particle accelerator through conversion of non whatever uranium. Used to produce encased plutonium cells for fuel plutonium fuel rods. Uh, power usage 500 megawatts on average. Wow. Uh, plutonium cells are concrete encased plutonium pellets used to produce plutonium fuel rods for nuclear power production. Plutonium fuel rods used as fuel for the nuclear power plant. Caution, produces radioactive plutonium waste when consumed. Highly radioactive. So what is highly radioactive? We got a suit. Then our final machine that we will be unlocking, the particle accelerator. The, the Fix-It particle accelerator uses electromagnetic fields to prop propel particles at two very high speeds and energies. This specific design allows for a variety of processes, such as matter generation and conversion. Warning, power usage is extremely high, unstable, and varies per recipe. Great. <laughs> I don't like how it's really high. All right, ground down copper ingots. The high, the high natural density of copper combined with the gran granule of the power makes this part fit for producing nuclear paste in the particle accelerator. Ugh. Pressure conversion cube converts outgoing force into internal pressure required to contain unstable high energy matter Which then our last and final product is the nuclear paste project part 9 Ship with the space elevator to complete phases complete. Yeah phases of particle assembly Power usage 5,000 to 1,500 megawatts. That's a lot Nuclear paste is extremely dense degenerate matter formed when extreme pressure forces pro pressure forces protons and electrons together into neutrons. It is theorized to exist naturally within the crust of neutron stars. That's pretty damn crazy. And that's what we're unlocking. This is our final hub upgrade. We've gone through tier one, two, three, uh, zero. Sorry, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven final one so let's put in all the things we need 400 uh, control rods we need 400 cooling systems we need 200 fused modular frames and we need 100 turbo motors 
for our final time. Let's launch off. Our, hu our, our hub ship. The there. particle accelerator enables previously impossible processes such as recycling nuclear waste and converting it into plutonium as well as the generation of exotic matter. A new project part enables progress to the next phase. Okay. And there it goes. Off into space for one final time. All right. Man, that's a 20 minute wait for it to come back down. Not that we use it anymore. But if we go back into the hub, select milestone, there is nothing more to select, which is incredible. Which means that well, all this, all we have now is to create our final gigantic factory for each of the four uh, resources that we need to send off this space elevator again. So first, let's see if we can build this particle accelerator. Wow, that's a lot of stuff. 25 radio, con whatever's, uh, 100 control rods, 10 supercomputers, 50 cooling systems, 20 fused modular frames, and 10 turbo motors. Wow. Um, yeah, let's, uh, let me go get the resources for all that, and then we'll, we'll build one of those. Yeah, let's do that. All right, so I've went and gathered all the resources for this particle accelerator. Oh, this thing's gonna be massive, isn't it? My goodness gracious! Look at the size of it! Oh, we can fit it up here. Oh, ha ha! Heck yeah! Let's place this puppy down. Oh my gosh! Look at it! Damn! This is a big one. No, just, just, a, just a little bit. Can I connect any of these? No, no. Yes! Look at it! Holy cow! We got, you got one circle over here. You got another circle over here. And you got an even bigger circle over here. That's crazy. That's a lot of circles. Crazy. What can we all make with this? We can make two things. There's two things that are allowed to be made in this. Plutonium pellets, which is uranium waste, which is really good. That means we can use our uranium waste because we aren't, we don't have any, we're just storing it right now. Um, and then non-fissile uranium. How do we get non-fissile uranium? Well, and then for our nuclear paste, 0.5 per minute. That's all the more it creates. And we need a thousand of them. That's insane. That's that's a lot. Sorry. That is, uh, that's That's a lot. All right. So, in order to create one of those, we need a pressure conversion cube. And to make a pressure conversion, oh, let's let's start from the uh, yeah, yeah, well, the pressure conversion cube. To make one of those, requires one fused modular frame and two radio control units. Not that bad, in all honesty. That's actually doable. It's very doable. Um, and then our copper, uh, not uh, our copper powder. It's just 30 copper ingots for five copper power. Not bad. Again, not as bad as I was thinking. Um, but, okay, so the uranium, non fissile uranium. Mmm. Mmm. There we go. <laughs> oh boy. It takes 15 uranium waste. 10 silica, 6 nitric acid, and 6 sulfuric acid. And sulfuric acid is made from sulfur and water. And nitric acid looks to be made from... Jeez, okay. Nitric acid is made from nitrogen gas, water, and iron plates. Okay. Interesting. Very interesting. Uh, let's see. So, to create plutonium fuel rods, those require 30 plutonium, encased plutonium cells, 
Oh my gosh. <laughs> 18 steel beams, six electromagnetic control rods, and 10 heat sinks. Wow, okay. And to create the encased plutonium cells is plutonium pellets and concrete. And those plutonium pellets are the non fissile uranium uranium waste. Holy moly. Sorry, that's just that's incredible. That is so much. That's that's a lot right there. Jeez. Okay. Oh, so we're reproduce so this produces 0.25 per minute. Which means one fourth of thirty, which is what seven point five. All right, am I right on that? Thirty divided by four, seven point five. Yes, I am right. Uh, what were we looking at? We're looking at our codex here. All the way down. That was the one in pellets. So we need seven point five in case plutonium cells. Which we produce five per minute. We would produce off of one machine, which is two. So we need like ten plutonium pellets. Sorry, no, we need fifteen plutonium pellets. We produce 15, and we produce thirty per minute. Okay, that's not bad. In all actuality, that's not bad. In terms of the ratio for that, that's not like we need a shit ton of plutonium pellets for all of it. We just need a, sh a shit ton of with uranium waste. Oh, because that's 30 per minute, so that's 25 waste per minute, plus another 30. It's about like, what, 60? 65 uranium waste per minute that we need? I, I don't think we produce that much uranium waste. Okay, okay, so nitric acid is again nitrogen gas water and iron plates So weird iron plates What the heck? Okay, so that's all that's all of our new stuff now before I end this episode I want to look at our three other things that we are going to be needing for this final phase four of our space station or our space elevator um, so we looked at the nuclear paste which is bananas to create um, actually no it's not it's actually not that bad it's actually reasonable to a certain extent um, next so th that's one the second thing is the thermal propul thermal pro propulsion rocket excuse me we need a thousand of those and that is That's awful. <laughs> That's this one's worse than the nuclear paste. Five modular engines, which I we never. Oh my gosh, we don't have a modular engine factory. We never made a modular engine factory. Those were the ones that we just did manually. They're a pain in the butt. Those aren't bad though. The turbo motors is going to be awful. It's require two turbo motors per minute. And those require so much. My gosh. And then cooling systems, six cooling systems, and two fused modular frames. Oh boy. That's gonna be that's gonna be hefty. Uh, next up is the magnetic field generator. Which isn't bad. Look at this. Versatile framework, which I we already produce. I already have a absolute boatload of it. Um two electromagnetic control rods. Those are iffy. Staters and AI limiters. We'll see on that. I don't. We don't produce enough staters. That have to be all. And then ten batteries. Fun. Real fun. Uh, and then the final part is the assembly direction director system. Which here's here's what we have automated. The adaptive control units. I think I think that's the one that we have automated. I might, I might have it flipped. I might have the modular 
these, the modular engines. Those might be on like the bridge. I can't remember. One of these is, and the other one is, and then a supercomputer. All right, fine. Um, so, so, in terms of how we're going to build this factory, I mean, oh, oh my gosh, 4,000 of the, I haven't really looked at that, that's so much. We need 4,000 magnetic field generators Produce one per minute. And we need four thousand need four thousand assembly director systems, which is 0.75 per minute. We need four thousand of them. Which means if we did four of those, we would be producing three per minute. These factories are going to be massive. Oh my gosh. So... Gosh, even 10 per minute. The... 400... Minutes, which is like 3-something hours. Which we can do, we can do under, if they're all under, if we can get them all under five hours to produce everything. Which sounds crazy, but I'm, I'm okay with doing five hours. We're just gonna have to completely, so, okay, so my other thought process with this is that we, we don't produce enough of anything. Um, like at all. This is so much bigger than what we're prepared for. Just with all the resources, all the resources that are gonna be needed for all these. It's gonna be absolutely insane. So this 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 final factory is going to be massive. It's going to be it will probably take us into episode one hundred over episode one hundred, in all honesty. There's so much to it. And there's so much that I want to do with it. Um, so yeah, be, pre be prepared for these last, who knows how many episodes, 15 to 20 probably episodes, to just be for the production of all this stuff, because that's what it's going to be. Um, and I'm guessing there's going to be hiccups and stuff that I'm not ready for doing this. But the nice thing is, is that we're going to do it all with trains. We're not gonna do. We're not. We're gonna do it with trains and drones. We're not doing any more trucks and tractors, so we won't have any inconsistencies or as many inconsistencies as we've been having with those. Because they, they work, but they do not work well enough for us. They especially don't work well enough for this factory that we're gonna be building. So, and so the so next these next couple of episodes are going to be laying out these factories. If that makes sense. We're going to build our location and just lay out all of uh, all, all the uh, machines that are going to be for this. And that's going to take a while. because There's going to be a lot of machines. Because uh, I might just have this be its own separate thing, so that way I don't have to worry about it. Um, yeah, I really, I, I, uh, I've been hating how my factories have not been helping with other factories. They haven't been producing enough for other factories, and I don't want that. So this is going to be its own totally separate factory, off the whole grid from this one, except for, for power, and that's it. So yeah. Uh, that was a lot of words. Anyway, uh, this is exciting. I'm very excited for creating this final factory. I hope you enjoyed, and we will see you all in the next one. Bye!